I'm Alexis Castellan. I'm the secretary for a club on campus called Soul Survivors. We basically raise awareness for sexual assault victims. Um, it's very important to fight the negative stigma that surrounds sexual assault and reporting of sexual assault. So we try and fight that and get people to talk about it and open the conversation about it. Otherwise, it kind of gets just gets dismissed. Um, it shouldn't be as regular uh, a part of society as it is. So we try and just get people to talk about it and raise awareness. Trying to approach how sexual assault is talked about and um, brought up in the college atmosphere in a way that isn't normally brought up. So especially the way that the school brings it up with the training that they do and the way it's talked about there is very unrealistic and it's not talked about in a relatable sense. And so our goals are to try and make people aware of it and not be afraid to talk about it and bring it up in more of like a casual way so that people are more comfortable having those conversations with each other so that it can be discussed and have those issues kind of ironed out before the incidences happen. Um, and we do that through like having these interactive art events where people can come help us spray some footprints and show their support and say, you know, oh, like I am going to be a supporter of survivors and kind of have that in the back of their head as they kind of go about their daily life. Um, try to keep uh, everyone in the community kind of aware of what's going on outside of RPI. Um, so that includes, um, you know, what's going on in politics. So we had um, an event where we wrote to the Department of Education about um, the changes to the Title IX that, that were proposed. Um, and we also just try to keep people aware of what's going on day to day and try to establish these new connections with other clubs that are on campus um, that also are kind of uh, clubs involved with activism um, and to show that we are going to be able to change the world. With a lot of clubs, people think that the most important thing is for us to be getting as many members as possible. But like realistically, that's not really what we're trying to do. We're trying to just influence as many people as possible through like our events and all like the art installations that we put on and things like that. Just because the point is to make people aware that this is happening and be more of like a awareness raising and show that there's support out there for people and just kind of be informative rather than having as many people at our, at our club meetings as possible. One of my teammates actually, I'm on the women's soccer team, and one of my teammates saw uh, an event at Boston University that kind of inspired her to start this event. And the event, it's called the I Will Walk With You event. Basically, we spray footprints around campus and it kind of symbolizes our solidarity with sexual assault victims and that we stand with them. And the event was so popular that a lot of people came up to her and were like, you should make this into a club because we think this is really important. So she started a club and it's just grown bigger and bigger ever since. Our big goals are to be making like increasing like our social capital and like our cultural capital so that we can change what that is on campus here at RPI and then hopefully we can transfer that and the model that we have here to other campuses. Because right now it's a problem that's not just isolated here at RPI, it's a problem that's at a lot of places. So focusing it here first and then seeing if we can make that change through what we're doing and then trying to let other colleges adopt that I think would definitely be the best way to go. Um, so I think we're just trying to focus that here first. Our biggest event is the I Will Walk With You event. Um, and this is the event that people know as the blue footprints around campus. So what we do is we invite members of the community to come and spray paint feet uh, to demonstrate support for um, sexual assault victims and the survivors. Um, and each footprint represents a different person who's willing to walk with a person on their journey to um, recovering from uh, such a um, from an event like that. Um, and then, so during Sexual Assault Awareness Week, which is like our prime time, we usually only had one event, but we've grown to start co-hosting a lot of events. We're united! We're we have the power! We have the right! We are here! Stay back the night! People unite! Stay back the night! Survivors unite! Stay back the night! Women unite! Stay back the night! Men and women unite! Stay back the night! Take Back the Night is an event that is um, bringing everyone from different parts of the community to walk together and march. Um, and we have chants that go on throughout the event, you know, that say, you know, I'm going to take back the night. And it's, um, you know, a chant to empower people and to take back their rights um, and to show people that there is a lot of support around in the community and that um, the way things are going now is changing and that um, people who are 
um, victims of sexual assault are going to be supported and they're going to be believed. Um, and every year this event has been growing, which is really reassuring. Um, and we have a speaker who comes um, and discusses her experiences and you know what lessons she learned from it and how she hopes other people will be able to recover from some of their more traumatic events. Um, and it's just a really good time to bring everyone together and kind of discuss these really important issues because these are issues that a lot of people feel uncomfortable discussing. Um, but having these big events um, makes it more normal to speak about these things and uh, makes it not such a taboo. The new project that we're starting is actually called the Clothesline Project. And basically it's a form of art expression that um, victims of anything from sexual assault to domestic violence can um, do. They create a t-shirt display. So you get a t-shirt. The color of the t-shirt indicates like the form of violence that like you have undergone or like someone you love has undergone. And you can write words or statements. You can draw a picture, anything you want that kind of expresses how you feel. And it's a way to like empower people and show that like they're not going to let their lives just be taken by um, their um, incident. So another event that we do is care packages for the Unity House. So in Rensselaer County, we have a Unity House that's dedicated to domestic violence and human trafficking. Um, they have a shelter for them as well. So uh, we have uh, talked to a lot of different groups on campus to set up boxes. So we've gotten a lot of donations from different frats and sororities. Um, Residence life, um, you know, academic advising groups uh, to donate, you know, clothing and common household items to help people um, transition from the Unity House into back into their normal lives when they're able to do so. Um, so that's another one of our outreach programs that we hope to just make a positive impact and try to help. Um, as many people as we can. We also participate in October, it's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, so we'll co-host a lot of events then, um, such as this year we started um, sponsoring, um, like the Domestic Violence Awareness Month started sponsoring athletic games. So we'd give the team something purple to wear during the game. And then um, that would kind of like raise awareness about it. Um, next year we're hoping to get like t-shirts or something a little more official just because it's just the start of it this year.